Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night, Wynne and Britta secured the fetters of their wraith friends in preparation for the coming storm, despite Joey's dark side taking control. The group picked up mysterious allies at the airport, Amaya, Weathers, Kabir, and Neil. Together at last, the Coterie started to catch up. We pick up with a group of you, making your way from the airport, all piled up into a vehicle. Johnny, I believe you're at the wheel, and are now headed to the Royale. At first, there's a bit of a long quiet. At first, there's a long quiet that rests between the group of you. But Neil, it becomes increasingly difficult to carry the burden of the information you carry without speaking on it. Uh, um, uh, guys, are we, um, going to the Royale, how important is, um, is Coterie, Coterie meeting? Coterie meeting? It's been a long time, I mean, I know it's only been like a week or two, but I'll just... Neil, if you, uh, kind of group if you're up. itching to talk, you can feel free to talk. No, man. no, 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 I, I think, um... Uh, there, I mean, obviously, there's things to, to talk about with our, our friends and allies here. Actually, friends and allies is kind of one of the important things. But it's been a long week in New York. I'm sure they want to go and, and you know, rest and, you know, check on their own havens. and, and Johnny and looks affairs. up into the rear view and catches eyes of Weathers. Has he been like this the whole time he was with you? Yeah, but he ain't wrong about there being a lot to talk about. Well, I get that. He just likes to beat around the bush for a while. All right. I'm so trying really hard not to. Wind pipes up with Kabir probably in her lap and, like, nuzzling into her neck. So say what you can while we've got the time now. Mm, um, has to do with the security of, of New Haven and, and the spot coming and people who happen to know certain things about members of the Coterie and... <sighs> so, so say... Public? I just did. All right, all right. Well, calm down. I'll get to the Royale, and we can have a little meeting. I suppose uh, we'll Weathers, you and Amaya, can, you probably have some things you want to talk about. Yeah, we've got things to talk about, so don't worry about it. K- I, Kabir, I'm sure you can find some mischief to get into that won't bring the house down, will you? Kabir gives you this look like, bro, right now. <laughs> but, like, slowly he nods like, of course, anything for you, Johnny. Uh, perfect. Does that uh, does that calm your uh, your nerves a little bit, Neil? Neil does not answer verbally because he is like holding his own jaw to like keep his fucking mouth shut. Look, I'll take that as a yes. We can just fill him in a little bit of what's going on around here on the way the rest of the way here. So he's uh, been missing for all the fun things that we've had to deal with. Yeah, it's been a fun. What fun? No, strictly no fun. Like decidedly lack of fun and so we can fill them in until we get to the royale about the things going on with like the chantry and i don't know the asimites being here uh, what's the the they're in town what, what's going who's this is the part where we're glazing over the part My, <laughs> miles's tactic 100 percent works and neil is now more full of questions for other people right and starts just really grilling down and like trying to listen to as they're driving uh as you listen to Miles vaguely explain what's happened. The group of you arrives to the Royale. As if they'd been caught in some sort of, like, 
trapped to bear witness to an awkward conversation. <laughs> Your guests depart from the vehicle rather quickly, all of them heading into the club. Wynn will kind of like grab Kabir's hand and say, I want to talk to you about some stuff later. He gives Wynn a kiss, nods, and then slips away off to whatever no good he's going to be doing at the club. <laughs> All right, y'all scoot inside. I'll find a safe spot for the uh, the vehicle, and I'll meet you in there in just a couple minutes. Got it. Uh, okay, Miles, is there like a like a quiet spot, like a like a spot where guys like me can't overhear us talking? There are a number of different areas. I don't try to utilize the same one all the time, just because it gets predictable. Yeah, smart, smart, so, smart, smart. There's a couple of rooms in the back that we can use. This is why we need an air horn, guys. Britta heightens her vision specifically at that, trying to see if there's anyone that the Coterie, well, that she specifically would recognize as someone trying to listen in as they're finding their spot. You look around, keep an eye out so far, nothing. Neil will do something similar, but full paranoid Malkavian crazy and will open the eyes of chaos when he walks into the club, which could be a little overwhelming, just to see where might be safe, whether or not there are, like, designs on following us. Just, he opens himself up to the chaos of the universe to try and see, like, I I really need to talk about this, but I really need not to be overheard. There's an area over by one of the speakers that's got, like, a little static. It's a little kind of messed up from being constantly at a maximum volume. And there, there you feel like if someone was to try to listen in with heightened senses... They'd be in for a world of hurt, and that pain is a source of safety. Uh, oh, great, uh, here, um, so uh, get get us some chairs, and, uh, Neil starts walking directly towards the speakers by the sound setup. Wynn stays, like, right with him because he's not disappearing again. He seems deeply hyper-focused right now. Mm -hmm. Like, until he gets whatever he has on his chest out, he's not gonna be able to really do anything else. Sure, I get some money to some people and get us some space over by the speakers the worst place to talk to <laughs> <laughs> uh, slightly behind right so like we still talk ish it, it's so it's <laughs> it's from people who are like 10 15 feet away they're not gonna be over here shit mm-hmm. but if you guys yell in each other's ears while talking or like move maybe behind the speaker that kind of deal you're gonna be better off I assume behind the speaker would be yeah all right, that's that's slightly is, better. Yeah, the goal is not to have a comfortable conversation. The goal is to yes. make sure so you can't be spied on. Because otherwise, I'm just going to respond to everything for this next scene by going, "What?" <laughs> 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 so once the group is gathered up, and Neil kind of like you know, pushes people into like the right little, so we're kind of group like group huddle. Yeah, we're this is not a comfortable no, arrangement. Not at all. Yeah, great, and love it. He just shouts uh, apologetically. But shouts like, we don't have to stay here the whole time. I just, we need to not be heard for this next part. And this is the best spot in the house where no one can hear us, even me. After a few minutes, Johnny shows up as well. He he comes over, looks at you quizzically about the fucking horrible spot you've picked out, but (laughs) seems to just kind of accept it. We can, uh, I was telling them we can talk. He just, he gives you a glare and drags on his morley. This is like the worst anonymous meeting. Miles. Someone in the city is selling information to the Sabbat about what you did. Are we uh, actually going to do this for the whole scene? <laughs> we don't know when you guys get sick of it. I think, I think Neil can do that. I'm going to be like, dude, you need to calm the fuck down. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I was like, I'm not. You know, you don't have to do it the whole time. <laughs> I'll be at the bar when you're done, whatever you're doing. <laughs> you can't go to the bar. This involves you. <sighs> Neil, just talk normal. You can hear me? You can hear me if I talk like this? It's loud, but yeah. Okay. Well, no one else over there can hear us. That's why we're here. Miles. That's that's me. When I was in New York, I was spying on the Sabbat. That's good. Yeah, it was news to me. Uh, I, while I was down there, members of the killing spree, Carmen uh, and your sire, Johnny, they were there too. They were rallying a list of packs, a huge list of Sabbat to come assault New Haven. They're all coming here. Johnny exchanges a look with Miles. Your sire told me himself that the goal of New Haven is for everyone here to be a bulwark for a meat grinder 
to stay here and die against the Sabbat, but we have to so that they can take other places. They're trying to get Pendragon to, like, get his army to go down and assault New York while we are taking the brunt. Like, they're the hammer and we're the anvil. So specifically, he needs all the princes and stuff to stay here to die. Um, and we need somebody to go and get Pendragon to send his army down to New York. Like, that's your sire's plan. We're not holding New Haven. That's the point. The problem is... It's a mixed metaphor, though, isn't it? There's... So, I, I don't know. I don't know the... I mean, we're not really an anvil if they're striking New York. No, I guess... a shield and they're more of a sword. But. Y- y- okay, I don't know <clears throat> war stuff, but yeah, that makes sense. It's not even war stuff. It's just is how a ha- hammer and anvil works. Less relevant. The problem is when I was down there, I was spying on Carmen, and Carmen was talking to someone who was in a, like riding a ghoul. They were possessing a ghoul, but they were old enough where I couldn't tell who it was. I, I got a block, and I don't get blocks unless it's some sort of an elder. Uh, I read you. They were selling the information to Carmen that they knew and had proof that the new prince of, of the city, you, were a diabolist, that you had diabolized Upton Rollins. What? I haven't looked yet because I wanted to talk to you first. You That's why look. I didn't want anyone else here. But if I can see it, I actually will look at this point. Uh, seven successes. Neil, are you using heightened senses with this? For sight, yes. Okay. Spend point of willpower or experience immediate sensory overload. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will spend the willpower so I don't go blind. Okay. How many successes did you get? Seven. With seven successes, you can ask him seven questions about his emotional state or creature type, etc. Mm-hmm. However, you immediately see terrible black veins that wriggle and undulate and move in his aura. The things that I want to know are when I say this out loud in front of the coterie, what is your immediate like top two emotions? So that'd be like two questions. Mostly annoyed. (laughs) (laughs) Other than that, um, just resignation. Number three, and I don't know if this is a question for Tim or for Lex, I am looking for any residual touch, because as far as Neil knows, last time he left, there was a demon in your head, and he does not know anything's changed about that. So I am looking for, like, demonic taint and residence. You see no such thing in Azora. Okay. Am I correct in assuming that Neil knows a little bit about Diablerie, considering who his sire is? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um... There's two last... I have a couple other questions, but there's only two more that I want to ask. Uh, One is, is there any sense of, like, guilt or weight to what Miles did in regards to Diablerie in his aura? I did pass, so yes. There is some guilt to it. Yes. And then two, I was in New Haven for a long time. Roland's had particular little patterns, and I want to see... I don't even know if this is something I can see, but Neil's trying to see if there's any lingering Roland's impacting Miles's like emotions examining his aura for any signs of shards of an intact Rollins you do not see anything okay I will add as someone who knows a bit about Diablery it would take some time before that manifested anyway fair enough mm. Neil opens his eyes hyper focused stares at Miles for a little bit and then you can see him sort of wrestling with the information overload in this club uh, as he's, like, way overdoing it, but manages to push through, and then nods. Um, the answer to it would be yes, Win. What? Yeah, d- it's all over your spirit. No, Miles, you you didn't... I did. How else do you think we were going to handle 13 Elder Princes coming? By not doing that? What does that have to do with anything? How do you think most princes get there? Get, and how get power through political machinations? Mm, sometimes. Win vibrates Miles. in her chair when the answer is yes, and after a minute, just stands up, kicks her chair over, and walks out. Britta takes in a deep breath and looks just dejected and follows Win. You're you're a Ventru. Everyone knows your lineage. There's no hiding what you are. It's like you, your lineage is your whole thing. That's where your power base comes from. What, like, what is what's going to change that? By power comes from power, and so just having the power. How has the power helped you become prince? You didn't. You became prince. Like, 
Like you, how many of these other princes? Got, you successfully got him. Stop. What do you think was going to happen when these other princes started showing up? The they, same thing. They've already one of them's already attempted Praxis. And how did that go? We killed them. Yeah. And and how did how did Roland's blood help? But they were weaker ones. Okay. There are stronger ones here. And you have. Uh, us and you have what like, we, we've done do I, I I agree with miles you do I do I uh, was there and helped him do it uh, Neil was dead silent was just completely flabbergasted at this I, I don't understand but do you want to survive the coming nights N none of us are gonna survive the coming nights that's not really the point survival is not the point to protect is the point yeah that's my point. But protects who from what? You from them. So what you're saying to me, Miles, is that you think that we should start diablerizing. No. Because I, I gotta tell you, I just escaped from someone who tried to get me to do that. Like a lot. I'm not advocating it for everyone. Anyone. You're advocating it for you? No, I'm not advocating it for me. I'm doing it because I had to. You're... He's advocating it for the Prince of New Haven but that's to remain I'm, strong. That's what I'm saying. In the is, face of a lot of opposition. But that is going to be what causes the downfall of the... No, the, what's cause, what would cause the downfall of New Haven is if we had an influx of Camerian princes that all were fighting over a seat that couldn't be held steady. But that's the point that I'm making, is that the Sabbat know and are using that information to undermine Miles and continue the game of people fighting over all this so that they can come in and kill because there are already Sabbat, not just the killing spree in the city. If it wasn't one thing, it would be another. But why take it on? I don't under I don't understand. Then don't understand. That's not, not possible for I, me. We've explained it to you. I don't know what else you want. And I think you're wrong, Miles. I do. I'm sorry. Wouldn't it, be the like, first physically time. Physically pains me. To, it would be the first time, frankly. I get second-guessed a lot by a lot of the things that I do. Okay, not by me. By everyone. And I I welcome it. I understand that I don't. But these 13 princes, I would be enslaved by one of them if not. There's ways around that. Is there? Where were you? Not here. And what? I don't know. The answer to that question Blood is magic? I don't know. Th there's all sorts of things you can do. Is blood magic any better than this? Yes. See, that's where I don't know if, what, if we're all on the same page either. Johnny, you this, can't see it. It is a stain this man, on his soul. I can see it. I can't see what, what blood magic does to your soul either. I can. Nothing. So I gotta trust you. Yeah. I can teach a you blood to see sorcerer. it if you want. Or Britta could teach you to see it if you don't want to trust me. Regardless, this man's also the one who corralled a demon. Which was also a mistake. But he did it. Which was a mistake, which, by the what, way, was, where what, is it Was now? the fact that he was able to corral that a mistake? It's not there now. Where is it? Because it's not in Miles right now. It's not in New Haven. What does that mean? And how do you know that? It was I, taking control of my body during the day. Miles. Your way would have had it free, too. The circle wasn't intact when you were done. Because it was e So your way was a mistake also. But the circle was reparable. And because this of what I did, correct. We had time. How do you know how long we how had? How do we know anything? Because you research and you learn and you look at things. You and don't just sometimes you don't have time for that. Your way would have been a mistake also. It's happened and it's done. And if it wasn't a mistake, then you should have been here to counsel the prince instead of going off to some party in Rhode Island. But it was kidnapped. She was gone. She was taken. And we made the decision to let her take care of nope. that. As far as I saw, she came back with a coterie of... Tamahera to kick the door through the shanty. She and Pendragon and Festival. Not like you brought her back. Only got out of that party because of me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good work. Because I found the way out after the Sabbat came in huge numbers and burned everything to the ground. You did a great job there. Sounds like we could have used you when we were Diablerizing Rollins. I guess so, because I wouldn't have. Miles, I love you. Because you're you, and also because, frankly, I'm bound to you, so I can't not. But there's an arrogance to some of these decisions. And it is so hard for me right now to hear you justify it and be okay with it, because justification leads to more justification. And then, before long, you're my sire, who is 
around, by the way, and grabbed me and staked people and said he would come and kill me and all of you if I didn't eat them. And I didn't because I can't Anyways, do that. I don't have to be buried by my decisions. No, but someone I can is. live with them. I don't have to rethink and redoubt all of the decisions I make all of the time. But this one was a bad it's one. It's done. And I just want to what do you want me to do about it? Undo not do it? it again. I don't plan on it. So l l look me in the eye then and tell me that you have not been tempted to do it again. I have definitely been tempted to do it again. And the more that you do it, the more tempting it becomes. Yeah, because Reese you just was are right the there. Road of blood. Reese was unconscious in front of me and I didn't. So why did... And I didn't. You didn't. This time. But why was it even a temptation in the first place, rather than just to kill him? I don't know. Why aren't you tempted all the time? Why don't you do it all the time? Because don't I you find see people that what are asleep? it does to people. Why? It's done. It is done. I've never diablerized someone and I've been tempted. I can't. It's not diablery that tempts you, it's the beast. Be okay with this. Why don't we bring the other people back at the table so that everyone can discuss it? Because we might as well get it done with. Regardless of what happens, unless you plan on killing me right now, it has happened. I don't. I just... Then we need to figure out how to move past it. I need you to know that you set the example for all of us, and the example you set is that this is okay. The example I set is that we've all taken different means to find ways to protect people that we care about. And this is one of the means that I actually have access to. When you cross a line, it crosses the line for all of us. Then you all guys will need to remind me not to cross it again. That's what I'm doing. I understand that, but also you're berating me about decisions that have been made. I, I understand it, and I'm listening to you, but I, I'm not going to go over it all over again. To be, it was not. Totally honest, it's the justifications. It's the, I understand that it's done. What's done is done. I don't agree with your justifications. I think it's wildly humorous. What would you do otherwise? Not do that. Stake him. How do you not have justifications once it's done? You, that's why you put thought in beforehand. You justify all your actions before is you Is it do done? I can't. Yet again, you keep going back in the past. It is done. I, we I, cannot do sorry, anything I'm besides move. focusing on a thing. I just, that's. A, we have to move beyond it. What's actually shocking me more than, than you doing it. What surprises me more than you do it is that Johnny is cool with it. Honestly. I'm not cool with it. I understand why he did it. I j You were there and you didn't stop him? You didn't even try? I we talked about it beforehand. We knew what we were doing. I don't see a future where this city holds together without Miles having the power of Rowan's blood. You're all I'm saying right now. So yes, but I won't look at the past, okay? I'll try and stop looking at the past, which is hard for me to do, but I'm going to do it to say, fine, then we have a problem before us. Do you know... You said the, the Sabbat is coming. Problem before us. How, mu how, how much of the Sabbat is coming? A lot? Sounds uh, like all of it. Uh, not all of it because a huge part of the Black Hand left, but uh, all, almost all of it. Let most of it. Do, do you know what kind of power the Sabbat wields? I do. I saw some of it. And because by they the way, rampantly diabolize. This is not what I wanted to do. This is not how I wanted to have these conversations. But Take a moment here. Johnny, I saw all of it. Can you guys... I saw all of it, both on Crusade and when they just hang out. I saw all of it, and I'm sorry. And I think we need everyone here. Can you guys go gather them up? Miles it would probably be best for me not to. Miles is right. Do you want to get Britta, or do you want to get Win? I don't... Or do I... you want to just go get them both together? Let's just go. Let's just go get them. Let's just go... Yeah. Let's just go get them. Britta had quietly followed Wynne, looking small, scared, and lost, just keeping close, but not trying to say anything. Wynne runs outside, less angry, more urgent, and when Britta catches up, she is dry heaving in an alley. Can I, um... And Britta has lifted her hand to put it on Wynne's back. She lets her. Britta does so. And her muscles are just like rocks on her back. She will... Maybe it's the hand. Maybe it's just the sensation of it passing. But when 
eventually begins to unknot. As Wynne slowly gets a little less tense, Britta gently kind of runs her fingers along Wynne's back, trying to give some small comfort. Wynne wipes her eyes. She tries to find the words and they just won't come. Britta is also lost in her thoughts and it doesn't feel like she can pick which emotional direction other than that kind of dread. She is pretty willing to share the silence because it means that she doesn't have to figure out what any of this means. On one of the passes on her back, Wynne will reach up and kind of just take Britta's hand and hold it for a minute. Britta stops initially, kind of mistaking it for maybe having contributed to the upset, but when she realizes that when just needs the steadiness, she kind of sits in this probably, honestly, gross bar alleyway. Good thing she's wearing jeans. <laughs> when kind of like lowers herself to a crouch. She doesn't let go of Britta's hand. She just kind of turns her head to look at her over her shoulder. Britta, do you actually know what Diablery is? Yeah, I... Well, I mean, I remember from when we were all scared that Johnny had... When we were scared that Johnny might have done it by accident to Cha. It's the death of a soul, Britta. It is the murder of the one thing that makes us people. People were saying that it leaves... Like a stain on you forever. We do an awful lot of bad shit, and that that's the one that marks your soul. It changes you down to your soul. The destruction of a soul that will never get the chance to be redeemed, it will never return to the cycle. It will never... It'll just never... Last time we checked in on this, Britta was working through the breaking of her blood bond. Does that have any particular effect at this moment, or is that still how I'm working through it personally? So, I mean, you still remember feeling all of these ways about this person. You remember them mm -hmm. fondly. I, I don't know what to... When we were all worried that Johnny had done it to Shaw, it seemed like it was... It was maybe the worst thing that Kindred could do. And I don't know if that's true. I guess there's... I guess there's a lot of room, but I am... Um, Apparently it's subjective. I just... I, I remember the way that I feel... I felt about... Roland's with the bond, and then I remember it breaking, and I... I it felt violent at the time, but I don't know if that's different because of... And I, I... I don't... I... Does it change anything if you do it on purpose? Diablery? Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll have to ask our experts. Johnny and Neil come walking out of the front of the club. Johnny immediately lights up a uh, another Morley, kind of scans up and down the uh, sidewalk looking for the two of you. Doesn't doesn't seem to ca uh, to catch where you are by the alley. Neil is also looking around next to Johnny, sort of unconsciously leans in towards him when the Morley goes up, like it's a familiar sort of like, almost like Johnny's Morleys are like a grounding sensation just to be around. He has not blinked in like like the Mulcavian has totally forgotten that he's supposed to be blinking and is looking around, and at some point does spot the two women, and sort of nudges Johnny and, and nods ahead over towards them. Can we convince the two of you to come back inside so we can talk more? Britta looks up at Wynne, gauging her reaction above her own. Wynne glares at Johnny. What else is there to say? I, I... There's all kinds of things going on that our coder needs to talk about for the coming nights. I think, uh, right now... We need to be solutions, solutions oriented. Um, I, I don't even, I mean, there's so, I, you know, I don't, I, he, Neil just kind of gets lost in his brain. Let me be clear about something. He looks at the three of you, each in turn, 
looking directly into your eyes. What Miles did is disgusting. It's reprehensible. But. There's no but, Johnny. There is a but. No. The but is the ass sitting in the club right now. The but is Miles deserves a lot more respect for the hard decision that he just made. I stand by him on this awful thing that he did, and the three of you ought to think about that as well. I'm expecting that at some point in the coming nights, you're going to have a long talk with your actual feelings on what he did. Wynn winds up a fist and punches him in the face. Johnny takes that in stride. Do not prescribe to me what Miles deserves from me. That's fair. But don't forget all the shit that you owe him. I don't owe him someone's soul. No, that's fair. Rumor has it, though, that Roland diablerized his sire. Who gives a shit what anyone else did? Rumor has it that all the elders diablerized their sires. In fact, I'm pretty sure the Camarilla is built on elders diablerizing other vampires. Johnny! But this whole fucking organization is only because she vampires... Punches. She punches guys, him again. Guys, stop, Johnny stop, catches please, the fist. Stop. Stop. Please, hold on. You are on a very high horse right we, now, Johnny. We can... Am and I? I'm not, and I'm not here for God, it. Please, I... Am I? Because right now I feel like I'm looking up at you, sweetness. You're the one telling me morality and what I should be doing. Because you know what's good in this world. Fuck you! Can we... I, I didn't want... All I'm saying is Miles always deals with us on the up and up. Then why didn't he tell me? He just did here. No, he didn't. Neil did. You used my resources to help you drain another soul. You can, made can we, me stop. complicit in we this. We are not near the speaker. If we could talk carefully. Please. You chose to make me a part of this. There's no words. I, I, so. Without telling me. No, fuck what you think he deserves. He made a choice for me without me asking. And if he thinks I'm gonna get over that, just because we've got bigger shit coming down the pipe? No, this... This changes. I will not let this decision break the coterie. Because, like you said, bigger shit to deal with. But don't pretend like you're doing me a favor. I'm not pretending like I'm doing you a favor. I'm just reminding you that it's Miles. Someone I thought I knew. Wynne kind of squeezes Britta's hand. She's kind of actually relaxes it because she's been... She hasn't let go. Just been squeezing harder as she's been getting madder. And now she finally seems to like actually feel the fingers in her hand and relaxes. You start realizing... That Britta has been intentionally quiet and has let herself fall behind you in the way of seeing the two of you get louder and more violent and more prone to the beasts inside of you. That as you're talking about this monstrous thing, Britta is bracing for a monstrous impact. While his beast doesn't look at ease, he doesn't have that hair on the back of his neck standing up look that he has when his beast is about to take over. Johnny looks genuinely angry. But at the same time, every time that win has hit you, Brit is scanning for the that vampiric impulse. Sure. And it's just, it's just it's interesting to see that it is that this looks like it is Johnny angry. Mm -hmm. Not the Bruja angry. Wynn and her beast are intermingled at this point. Mm -hmm. It probably looks... It seems, though, that when the anger gets highest, she punches or yells, and it quiets the urge to do more. There's been um, a lot of unintended consequences to uh, actions. Johnny gives you a hard stare. And I sometimes feel like we have a narrow view of who those consequences roll down on and who has to shoulder the burden. I... I want 
to be home. I want to be here. I want to be with all of you when I was in my mind, which has been so infrequently recently, all I wanted to do was come back, even knowing all of it. I just... I just worry, that's all, because we... I'm trying to understand your rationale, Johnny and Miles's. I don't agree with it, but I'm trying to understand it. But by doing that, we have a cavalcade, just just a fracturing, splintering mirror, branches of, of so many other problems that have now been created because of that action. And we need to figure out what to do about it because it's going to all come crashing down. And you're right, probably. Probably a lot of elders have gone that, but the structure of the Camarilla exists to stop neonates from doing this and protect the elders. So, like, okay. Miles' sire is going to kill him if he finds out about this. And it's Regardless obvious. Regardless of what the elders may do, that doesn't make it right and it doesn't justify anyone else doing this. I'm pretty sure Miles' sire already knows. He does not. Britta think, takes in another one of those unnecessary breaths, trying to study herself. I think you're being awfully naive about what Clan Ventru does. I was just with him. He has been clandestine and sequestered in New York City. He doesn't know yet. Bullshit. He doesn't know because the Sabbat don't know. being naive. I watched the secret spread in front of my eyes, and it had not touched him yet. And even if he does know, as soon as it is public, which is days from now, he will be obliged to do something about it. Guys. And, how is it, and, how, and so now we're actually Let touching Britta on talk. the real problem. Let Britta talk. No, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go inside, okay? Because we're not supposed to be alone for too long. So when and you we guys... We should be having this conversation with Miles. I agree. I, I do. I, I, I do. What Let's, am I supposed to say to him? You don't have to go inside yet. I'm, I'm just... I don't want Miles to be alone. He's got all the power in the world now. He can save New Haven now. What does he need us for? I'm just... I don't want... And Breda's, like, definitely close to tears. If you want to be with Miles, then go be with Miles. But don't pretend he needs us. Breda bites down. She looks hurt. He definitely needs us. And she turns and she goes in. I, she, the very fact that he did it means that he needs us at least to make sure he doesn't do it again. Or to make sure he can do it again. No. Do you trust a cannibal at the table? I trust Miles. I thought I knew Miles. The Miles I knew wouldn't be this dirty. I don't know if that's true. And I, Neil sort of like slumps his shoulders and follows after Britta. Because he also doesn't want Britta to be alone while she's walking in. There are two truths about Miles. He always stands by his word. And aside from breaking that, he'll do anything to win. We define win very differently. This is a huge fucking loss. <sighs> Maybe. But I think he's right. This is the way to win the war. It may be a loss in the short term. Don't act like this is a noble thing he did. This was sealing a power vacuum, plain and simple. At the cost of a soul that can never be redeemed. Fuck Roland's soul. Fuck Roland's. His soul may have had nothing to do with it. I don't necessarily see the difference. I, that's the problem. We're dealing with some heavy shit coming down from all angles. And now it's a hell of a lot harder for me to make peace with. It was never going to be easy for any of us to make peace I with this win. I don't give a shit if I'm in a fight. I don't even really care if I die in a fight, but I always wanted to be able to trust all of you. I think you can still trust Miles. We think differently. Miles, you sit alone. There is a loud thrum of music. Crowds of people mingling and living as though 
New Haven were not about to undergo an apocalyptic event. And as you brood in silence, one at a time, you begin to see the members of your coterie return. The first among them is Britta. Britta still looks small and scared and honestly closer to tears than when she walked out after when. But even though she's wrapped her arms around herself too tightly and she's looking at the floor, she slowly sits down next to you. Welcome back. She kind of peeks up at you and tries to formulate something to say, kind of nods. Very shortly thereafter, Neil walks in after Britta and sits down at the table, sort of glancing between the two of them, not really sure what to say. Characteristically can't handle silence for more than like 10 seconds and just says, uh, I guess um, would be solutions oriented for, um, I-, I think the others are coming. I think they're, I think. Wynn and Johnny just had to... We can get to solutions when people say their piece. Everyone deserves it. Yeah. At that point, Johnny comes striding in. He uh, grabs the spot. Wynn just needed a few more moments by herself. She'll be here soon. Sounds great. I love being this close in proximity to speakers. I mean, just, if, if we can... Just really, you know, something soothing about feeling all of the music go through me. I mean, it's always kind of like this, man. But if you if you want to go somewhere else... I'm mostly being sarcastic. It's fine. We can... I'm also not being sarcastic in, in some sense that it's weirdly soothing. Isn't it, though? Right? Yeah. It's like sensory deprivation in some way. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice when other stuff drowns everything else out. When will walk in, hands in pockets, hood drawn up over her head. She goes back to where the coterie is, but she doesn't sit. She just kind of puts her back against the wall. Leans against it, arms crossed. So, what else do we need to talk about? I, I, I was going to say we can we can go somewhere that's more comfortable if we're done talking about the this thing. Are we I just done didn't... talking about kindred shit? No, I don't care about kindred shit. It's just this specific thing. I didn't want other people to be able to, and this is the only spot in the club where no one else can hear it, no matter who or what they're doing. But it's up to you guys. But other stuff like domain stuff and kindred stuff, I just wanted to keep Miles's. Is things close to the close to the chest appreciated let's keep it all uh talking here that's fine okay sure before we go anywhere else one everybody should say what they should say or nope. want to say when it's not good to keep it inside it's not good to blow off in a club either so if we've got something we need to talk about then let's talk about it and i can talk to miles at another time when we're actually private okay. johnny nods at that i sure um miles yeah are you you after what does that mean i'm less affected by this in some ways than having a demon constantly talking to me that's back by the way what's back z is back yes he chased raven out of her body and is walking around as raven like he was doing to miles no raven isn't there he's fully possessed her if he's fully possessed her, it probably means she's dead. Or so crushed inside of herself that it's just a demon, though. Or she made a deal. No. No, she did not. Because survival is about survival as you, and not the bargains you make. At least for her. Wasn't she so anti-demon that she wanted she was to- going. She was going to kill us if the demon was not cleared. Is that why Z might have gone after her, or...? They had similar goals in mind. I mean, they clearly have a history of some kind or another, based on the books and the Order of the Cloven Hoof and all of that. But what is he going to do with... I guess, what is he going to do now that he has that form? Whatever he wants, right? Yep. Maybe he collected on a deal he made with her prior. He, she, to my knowledge, has never made deals with demons. How much do you know about Raven? A lot. Sure. I don't know a lot about demons, but I can learn more. I just haven't had a 
chance with everything that's... You should also know he is taking the agreement to not cause us harm seriously. That said... Agreement? He said there was an agreement that he would not harm the Oh, right. Miles the coterie. Looney did the... Yes. Okay. But he does like to watch while we suffer. So he arrived right before the storm in the Shadowlands did and watched me rot Shrek. Just so that's a nice backdrop for everything else. Britta tries to give Wynn an expression of comfort, but it's very hesitant. Wynn is kind of like purposefully not making eye contact with anybody. She seems to be trying to just focus inward. Okay, um... Is there anyone else? I, I think I've said most of my piece, but is there anyone else who, who wants to, before we start, um, is there anything else about Miles right now that we want to, I've said most of my piece, not all the backstory as to what's informing it, but it, he knows my opinion on the matter and the problems it's going to cause. I understand. I also understand that problems are coming one way or another. And I want to ask you a question about something you touched on. Okay. Uh, Johnny says he points at Neil. Miles visibly closes his eyes. How did you find out? So, um. Find out what? About Miles, right? Yes. I woke up in New York, um, in the care of. Uh, Weathers and Amaya and Kabir. You right? told us that. Yeah, yeah, Fast forward. The whole thing. Um, they said that I had agreed to, and they insisted on uh, spying on the spot. Right. Uh, I uh, snuck into one of their blood orgy, th- whatever, right? You know, the blood feast. And uh, the Vicos saw me before Lucita showed up and killed somebody and gave me an opportunity to run off. And as I was hiding, I was in a side room, a secondary room. Why was Lucita there? Uh, to kill somebody. I don't know. It was very fortuitous. She showed up when she did. I was dead. It's been okay. a lot of that the past couple of weeks. Um, but as I was hiding, Carmen was there in a room with someone, a mortal, but pretty clearly possessed by somebody. That mortal indicated that they were um, in New Haven, or at least context, that they were from New Haven. Uh, an elder, at least, or has some sort of way to hide their presence. And how, how would how would someone be able to hide their presence? Because uh, th- normally you're able to see who 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 would be riding a suit. Sure, but, right? Yes, but if they have abilities, elders can confound even my eyes. Okay, so uh, but somebody who had enough ability to dominate others that they could possess someone else so that's what i'm getting to because you mentioned something about that and what i want to highlight is that regardless of anything else here we have to be aware that there is more than likely a mole or a sabat uh, a sabat spy in the city who is of either a high enough generation or in possession of high levels of dominate that neil can't figure out who they are that limits the list. Um, Couldn't it be a combination? Possibly, but uh, what I was going to say is, so the absence of information is information in and of itself. So exactly. next time, depending, it's not a guarantee, but next time we, we have some sort of courtly gathering or, or something, um, I don't know, if you look around a room and there's a little black spot, maybe... Either, either way, it's somebody newer to the city was the impression that I got. Uh, and also that Carmen was not telling some of the others in the Sabbat yet that they were going to use that that information to destabilize New Haven to, to feed it to the other princes so that they all turn and, and turn on you politically and, and kill you. Do you know why Carmen was keeping that to herself? I don't I don't. If I had to wager a guess, it's they want to keep their source secret. Um I have a description of the guy I, I could show uh I don't know if anybody has contacts with the police or whatever, but if there was like a person who went missing that matches the description, then maybe we could trace their sources and 
I, I don't know. I have some contacts. I've been informed that Marcus Vitel is someone that should be watched, and all my interactions with him put me on edge. I don't know that individual, but I can try and watch He's him. a prince from D.C. Okay. I'll give you more information on him later. Okay. Sure. We can we can we can do that. Um This isn't uh directly related, I guess, but um Miles, are you okay? I was gonna say some more and Oh d- okay. questions we, are gotten. We, no, we can do that. And that's no we can fine. we can do the No, it's we can do that if you want to do that. I just you seem I mean, I know you ate somebody, so it's like that's its own thing, but like even outside of that you seem Yes, oh. the dragon. What? The dragon in the Chantry. Oh, yeah, you did tell me about that. Um, Insane. Released um, an attack that uh, severely uh, damaged my psyche or something like that. It's it's a constant uphill battle. I um, guess it it's hard to describe, but from how it feels to me, it feels like... Um, like it ripping away a part of yourself. So, both of you have looked hollow since that fight. Yeah, it feels, um, it feels harder to hold on to myself. I don't know if it's like that for you, Miles. It just, it's a- I, it feels like, like there's less of me, less of my will, less of my strength. It just, I feel, hollow, hollow is a good word for it. That's an impairment. And a weakness, and I definitely see it being a problem going forward. The more I have to deal with the other princes. Neil bunches up his face like he's thinking really hard about some sort of puzzle, and then kind of looking into the middle distance goes, I, if you're willing to go with me on this, um, I don't know if it'll work or not. This is a little uncharted territory, but I, I might have an idea on how to confront the missing pieces of yourself that sounds not fun no it won't be fun well part of it is fun that's kind of the problem what yeah we can talk about it later i just right. i might have a thought about that it's you might have not... a solution maybe i there don't know go. Sounds good. uncharted territory I, this is not i just let's go with the yes i have ideas we can try to we got it to find you yeah it won't feel like like being torn apart again, will it? It depends on what you're afraid of. Britta kind of like slumps further in her chair, tucking like her knees in closer. Anyways. No, sorry, I, I just, you seem, there's. It's been a long. Emotional time. exhaustion and then there's you weak too. So I just. You good? Yeah. I'm, okay. We're just, that's fine. Um. I'm, I'm still but, trying to talk here, and so, you're still, still trying. Sorry, you're, I, Anyone else? Thank you. I would like to say my piece, and then I would like to. S- anybody else is free to state what they want. But the act is heinous, and was not without debate. But I also did not see a way to keep everyone else safe, and I will endanger myself and all parts of it. To keep everyone safe. Is it lonely up there on the cross, Miles? I don't know. It sounds like you're up here with me. I've because never pretended. Because it sounds like you're judging. I am. Great. Gr- very harshly. Cool. It's... I don't know if it's probably not gonna... Every time that I've fucked up or been something that I couldn't take away or fix or any of that I've I don't know if it's the same I just it's meant a lot to me that you guys have been willing to see if I'm so me um that's why I was asking you if you were still you does not feel like much has changed I've the attack was more Damaging in some ways. Um, Rollins had done and continue to do and plan to do much to separate and destroy us. I, I think um, 
I don't want to speak for everybody, but I, I think the moment he started preying on Britta, we all kind of decided he needed to die. Is that an overstatement? or? He continued to keep pressing on it. Yeah. On top of that, your own trial. Yeah, not great. Although, reminder, that trial is because I was an accused Diablerist. <laughs> No, it's because like, you were I, your sire. I run. Well, that who was is the, an accused Diablerist? Well, he's not accused. He, the, he's he's full fledged into it. Um, there's a philosophy amongst the warriors of Hakim, the path of blood, that all heart's blood must be reclaimed, and uh, that's the one he wants me to do. So, it's I'm not going to do it, but I got to admit it's harder. Miles, like, you said that Roland's. Was gonna go further? It seems like he had more plans on you and tying us to you and then removing anything that was possibly a problem. He had been spying on us using some of the Nosferatu. Which ones? Seems like the report came from Fester. Has anyone seen him, by the way? Speaking of things we wish we didn't do and could take back? He's a Nosferatu. Not unless he made himself known. So we don't know if he's in the city. We don't know if he's alive. But Why would he sir? not be? Neil looks horrifically guilty. I, um... My sire made me do things. He had put things in my head um, to act like a Manchurian candidate. And his eyes flick over towards Britta and then back. Uh, I Last I saw Fester, I had lit him on fire and he was running... Out into the night, minutes from sunrise. Did, did we survive that? Being lit on... F- what? You were lit on fire. You survived. Okay, I... I get the fire out. Yeah. And he could find a place to hide from the sun. I don't know, that's why I asked. Anyways, he was selling to... I mean, it makes sense, I suppose. That he was working for. That's what they... The domain. Do. Yeah. Not entirely his fault, and I get it. Hmm. Much like Runwick was doing his job. So, um... So he was... Fesser was spying on me so that Rollins could separate us? At least control us. But they saw you as a linchpin and a problem. So getting you triple blood bonded was part of the plan. Oh. The fact that Rollins was kind of a creep just... Icing on that particular cake. Right? So. Um, I mean, he was insistent upon it the, the few days before. I've been mostly ignoring him. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Meerhead. Wynn Cabot the Gangrel was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Stagelfest. This episode edited by Rob Meerhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. See you next time, Kindred. What? (laughs) I feel like that's my number one emotion. I believe you.